Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Favi, and welcome to Arrows DIY, where I create home decor on a budget. This video is part of Makeover May, hosted by the lovely Brandy over at the DIY Struggle, and there's a giveaway. This week's theme is colorful DIYs, so I hope that you enjoy. Stay tuned for the giveaway details. In this video, I will be sharing some thrift flips using Iron Orchid Designs products. This pack of transfers called Brocant, as well as the paint inlay called Melange. To begin, I'm going to take out the pages with the transfers that I'll be using for these projects today. And I figured I'd just give you a quick little glimpse of the other transfers in this booklet. They give you eight sheets and these are relatively large. They're 12 by 16 size sheets. So I start off by just cutting off random little transfers that I'm gonna be using and I'm just obsessed with the quality of these transfers. I just decided to gift myself some of these transfers for Mother's Day and I'm so glad I did because it really does elevate my pieces today. Now, I'm going to start off with this little caddy that I found. This is a thrift flip video, but I'm sure you could find this in a thrift store, in your local thrift store. I want to put it on a shelf in my kitchen, so I had to take off the little handle on top there so that it would fit in, in my pantry shelf. So I'm going to start off by giving it a really good scrub um, using some mild soap and a rag. And I'm just going to take off all the dirt and the grime and get this ready to be sanded. Now I do give it a scuff sanding, but I want to paint it in this chalk color called Hazy by Folk Art. And it's a beautiful bluish gray color. It's amazing. I think it's wonderful for year round use. All the colors that I use today, I think are really good for everyday home decor. So let me know in the comments below what colors you use to decorate year round. And uh, I, I'm just obsessed with so many paint colors. <laughs> it's a thing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a scuff sanding all around the edges on all the sides. Then I'm going to wipe it down real good to get all the sand off. Once all the dust and everything's off, I go ahead and I just give it a coat of this hazy chalk paint. Now I do use a heat gun. I don't usually use a heat gun, but I needed to speed things up. Um, if you're new around here. Uh, I welcome you and uh, I'm currently expecting uh, uh, my sixth child and uh, any day now the baby will arrive so I'm trying to get all these things done as fast as possible so I gave this piece three coats in the chalk paint color and once it was fully dry I went ahead and I sanded the edges you don't have to sand if you don't like distressing on your projects. I just think it's beautiful and adds another character and detail to the project. And also, uh, when that original cream color shows through, I feel like it goes really well with the transfers we're about to use. So here I'm just taking the words from that transfer we cut off earlier. And this is the words that came with a chicken the set of chickens um, and I'm just going to make sure that they're centered. I remove the film from the backer and I'm just going to go ahead and line it up making sure it's centered using my ruler. Now I, it's important to have your paint fully dry so that these transfers will adhere fully. There is a little handy tool they give you like a little scraper tool. It's really nifty um, but Really, you could use any craft stick, any hard credit card, anything like that would work just as well. Now, as you can see, you want to make sure that you scratch every single corner of every single word before you attempt to peel back your transfer uh, because it can tear. So what they like to do, I say they as... um the crafters that use IOD, the stockists, and the creators themselves, they have this technique called riding the wave. And um, I think that's what it's called. Uh, but basically, you want to make a little wrinkle in the clear film that covers your transfer. And that little wrinkle is actually going to help you adhere your transfer. 
It's the strangest thing, but it works so well. So once you've rubbed all the letters down, you wanna create a little ripple, a little wrinkle, kind of like a wave in that top film. And you're gonna use a little bit of that as you scratch on your decal, your transfer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do that using a little bit of the wave. And you'll see that as you use the wave, um, as you're scraping it on, it helps transfer those letters a lot easier than just trying to lift it and scratch it. I have no clue how this works, but it just does. So once you get all your stuff transferred on there, you're gonna go ahead and just um, varnish your lettering. And that just means using the film that comes with it to rub it down real good. And that just ensures everything's adhered and everything's on there as it should. Now I'm gonna go in and add these little chickens. I'm gonna put the hen on first because ladies first. And I'm gonna try to center it in a way where uh, you kind of see the legs, the pretty legs of the chicken. So little chicken feet as well as her beautiful face. And I'm gonna scrape it on. I love that this transfer has that vivid white color. So it pops against that blue and uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and scratch the feet and the head, scratch the entire hen. Now for the corner there, right around the crease, there's a little crease. I do use the corner of this tool to get in there really well before I go around the corner. Then I wrap the transfer around the corner and I scratch the corner itself before scratching the rest of the transfer. And as you can see, it releases really well from the film. And um, yeah, that's how I decided to put her on. And um, I'm really happy with how she turned out. Now we're gonna go ahead and use that film again just to varnish her, make sure everything's nice and down and adhered. And we're gonna do the same thing with the rooster. So I did not want any piece of this little rooster uh, getting lost. I did not want his feet cut off. I didn't want his little, um, I didn't want the comb at the top of his head to be cut off. So I took a while to strategically place him on this piece so that not one little peak of his comb on the top of his head got cut off. So as just as before, I, uh, wrapped him around wrapped him around the side of the piece and this is how he turned out I think he's just so sweet I also added these words on top because it came with the chickens and I paid a pretty penny for these transfers and um, I'm not gonna waste any words okay <laughs> so I censored them on and um, that's how it turned out let me know what you think in the comments below Now, like I said, this is part of the Makeover May giveaway challenge. And in order to win a $100 gift card, all you have to do is watch each video that's part of this playlist. Each Friday, there'll be new creators and a new theme. So we're gonna be sharing unique code words in each of our videos. They're hidden somewhere in our videos. You're gonna watch the entire playlist, all the videos in the playlist, write down these code words, and you're going to send them to Brandy. Now, all you have to do is comment the word yes on the community post that she posts on the 27th of May. And I will message, I will send out a message on my community tab, letting you know to head on over to Brandy's channel and write the word yes in her community tab post. And that will enter you to win uh, a chance to win for the giveaway. So. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below, um, but do not write my code word in the giveaway. Do not write my code word in my comments below. Just comment anything else. I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know which one is your favorite project in the comments below and good luck. You have until the 1st of June to comment yes underneath Brandy's community tab post. Now for these next projects, I'm gonna be using this paint inlay called Melange. And as you can see, I'm just gonna cut off the ones that I'm gonna use. So 
I got this tray from a friend of mine, a crafter friend on YouTube. Her name is Sarah over at Sunflowers and DIYing. We were both in a mystery box challenge last year and she sent me this as an extra in my package. So thank you so much, Sarah. And I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a makeover. So I'm gonna take off this paper. I'm gonna take this paper off the tray. It's not my style and I want this project to be very rustic in nature. I love vintage and farmhouse and shabby chic decor. I am very eclectic in my style. So this piece here is gonna be uh, more rustic and vintage in nature. Kind of like a botanical. So I needed to get this paper off. To get this paper off, I just soaked a rag and left it on there to soften that paper. I left it on there for about eight minutes and then I used my favorite scraper from the Dollar Tree. Um, I get this at the kitchen section in Dollar Tree and I just scraped the paper off. Once I got the first layer off, I did the same thing again, just to soften the underneath paper. <laughs> yes, it's technical. And then I just went off and scraped it off again. Now I just have quality control, making sure that everything is done kosher. So now, once it's nice and clear, I go in with this Mod Podge in the matte finish, and I'm going to be using this as my medium. So I know it's a paint inlay, but we're gonna be using Mod Podge today, and we're going to transfer the paint into the Mod Podge. So I add a good, healthy layer of Mod Podge to my wood wooden tray, and um, I put too much Mod Podge. So if you're the Mod Podge police, close your eyes for the next 15 seconds. Um, I get a little Mod Podge happy and I would just rather put a lot of Mod Podge and then just scoop the excess out than repeatedly have to apply and apply and apply and apply more Mod Podge. But you know what? Do what you want, as Brandy says, do what makes you fuzzy inside, okay? Whatever makes you fuzzy inside, do with your Mod Podge. Now, I'm gonna take the paint inlay and I am going to apply it to the Mod Podge while it's still wet and I'm gonna apply it with the grid side up so the paint inlay face side down and once it's applied and centered I'm going to lightly tap it into place and then we're gonna take a wet rag and gently tap any wrinkles out of the paint inlay it's also gonna help apply pressure so that the ink transfers fully into the Mod Podge medium so now we're just going to let it sit overnight. You, I think you could just leave it for two hours. Just make sure that it's fully dry. Once it's fully dry, we're gonna come back and we're gonna spray it with some water. So this is not a cleaner. I'm just using this bottle because I couldn't find the bottle I bought specifically for this video. Um, I'm sure I'll find it right after the video, <laughs> but I'm just gonna use this spray bottle. Just know that there's only water inside of this bottle right now. I'm going to spray this paint inlay just to dampen it. You don't want it too wet. And we're going to let the water sit on it for about two minutes just to soften up that paper and loosen it from the ink on the paint inlay. Once two minutes pass, you're going to go ahead and gently peel off that film. You'll see that your paint inlay has fully embedded into that Mod Podge medium. And it's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm so excited to try this on paint and to try it on so many other pieces of home decor. So be sure that you subscribe and hit that bell because I'm gonna go IOD crazy up in this house. So as you can see here, I'm leaving it real time so you see how slowly I peel this off. You can tear this paper. It's kind of like a rice paper kind of texture. It's very thin. It is sturdy, it's very sturdy, but you could rip it if you're too rough with it. So I'm just showing you here how slowly I peeled it up and how gorgeous this is transferring on there. And now I'm just gonna speed it up because I think you get the point. And once that's all done, you don't wanna touch this image. This, this paint is activated now. So you could smudge it, you could actually mess it up so you might want to just let it dry but also you do want to seal it so I'll show you in the next DIY 
how you seal this if you want to seal it. But for now, I'm just going to save this paper because we're going to use it again on the next project. Yes, you can reuse these paint inlays up to three to four times, depending on, you know, how good you are with your technique. <laughs> and I'm cheap, so I'm going to get good at this technique because this was a pretty penny. I think I paid about $50 or $45 for these paint inlays, but they're so worth it. I'm going to love these DIYs for a long time. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with the color of my choice. So for this project, I went with the color Pine. It's a chalk paint by Folk Art. And I love this color green. So pretty. And as you can see, I'm just dry brushing it around the borders um, very lightly. And then I just kind of dab a little bit into this design. Not sure if this is an artichoke. Let me know in the comments below if you know what this thing is. I could totally Google that name at the bottom, but I haven't done it yet. I want to say artichoke, but it looks a little bit, I don't know. I'm not a botanist. I'm just a mom who likes to create home decor. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to get some antique wax by, um, by Waverly, and I'm just going to dry brush the outer rim of this tray as well as the inside of those little handles. Then I'm going to dry brush around the outside just to rustic it up a little bit more and make it a little bit more organic and dirty it up. Now I'm gonna add my favorite antique gold color by Folk Art and a very, very tiny brush just to kind of give it like a gilded effect on the corners. And this finishes up my vintage botanical print and I really love this tray. As you can see, I'm just putting the gold all around and then just dry brushing it slightly to tone it down and to mix it up with the paint. But that's how it turned out. I'm, I'm obsessed with this tray. It kind of looks like a relic in my opinion, but you know, I'm biased. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this one. I'm obsessed. All right, so for our last project today, we're gonna to be working on this Lazy Susan. I got this Lazy Susan at the Habitat for Humanity, and it actually came complimentary with my table. We bought a dining table and chair set there, and they just threw in this Lazy Susan, but it was $19.99. It's huge, gigantic, ginormous. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a good scrub, and then I'm gonna give it a scuff sanding. Now I wish I had my orbital sander. I packed it away and it's packed away good. So I have to just use the sandpaper and that's what I did. I would recommend using an orbital sander if you have yours handy and don't pack yours away like I did. I'm going to go ahead with this chalk paint color in the color plaster and this is just going to be our base because uh, we're about to add a whole bunch of colors. To this lazy Susan. Now, as I said, I want all these DIYs to be everyday DIYs. They're all for my kitchen. So I'm going to be adding some neutral everyday colors that go well with all of the seasons um, once I get this fully painted. I like to watch paint, so that's why I kept this in there. Um, but let me know if you hate watching paint because I love it. So I took a variety of colors. I'll list them below in the description box. Um, but I used about five different colors and I just dipped a little toothpick into the paint bottles and then kind of flicked it randomly around this Lazy Susan. And uh, just offhand, I used the same colors from this video. So I used my antique gold color, the pine chalk paint, the hazy chalk paint, as well as black and I think I used a dark gray called Maui Gray. Okay, and now I'm just taking a large paintbrush and I'm just swooshing it back and forth, as you can see. And I am going in one direction if I want it to spread, and then in the other direction if I want to kind of cover that with the white paint. Now I added more white paint to any spots where I wanted to tone down the color, and it gave me a really cool effect. 
Now, I felt like I needed more gold because I always need more gold. Um, so I went in with some more of that folk art antique gold color. And I just love gold. So, you know, I just added more gold. But do what you want on your project. Use your colors that suit your style, your aesthetic, your home decor. Whatever makes you fuzzy inside, as Brandy says. <laughs> All right, so once this is totally dry, fully 100% dry, I cannot stress how important it is for this to be dry. This is the next day, the following day I'm doing this. I take the transfer from the brocante transfer pack by IOD, and I remove the film from the back of the transfer. Now, if you do not have fully dry paint, this transfer will stick to your paint, and you will no longer be able to use this transfer. So listen to me, listen to me now, make sure that your paint is fully dry and then you will be able to do what I'm doing right now. I put the transfer on there, but I haven't pressed it down and since it's dry, I'm able to move it around to make sure I got my positioning right. As you can see, I used my square from Dollar Tree and I just made sure that all of the sides, the perimeter of this were the same distance to the outer perimeter of the Lazy Susan. Now, for my particular Lazy Susan, it was five inches and a half on all sides. Once I was happy with the position, I officially pressed it down. And then, as you can see, I'm just going to scrape and scratch uh, using that little tool that came with the pack. I'm just going to scratch every single nook and cranny, every single spot. It does take a really long time, which is why I rushed this. This is why I sped it up for you. It's very simple to do, but um, I just figured you wanted to see me scratch this thing for another 10 seconds. And um, as you're lifting up this film, you don't want to focus on the clock itself. What you want to focus on is the film you're removing. So you want to make sure that nothing is being left on that film. If you see anything on that film, just put the film back down and scrape it rigorously once again until it's all transferred down to your surface. And it is very relatively easy to do. However, you you might your fingers might hurt if, <laughs> if you're, you know, pressing too hard, but you could always take breaks, you know, but it's simple to do in theory, you know. So as you can see here, I'm just scraping away, taking all my frustration out on this little transfer and I'm, and I'm loving the way it's coming out. Now, if you haven't known, um, my secret word is time because I never have enough time. And I figured if we, you know, make that the word, then just make sure not to write it in my comments below. Can you please not write it in my comments below, please? Do not write it in my comments below. You're probably writing it in the comments below right now, aren't you? We got to save that word for the 27th when Brandy posts her community post. You're going to write the word yes in her community post and then email her the list of all the words. So that's my word, but there's like 10 other words you have to collect from all the other creators in the playlist. Okay, so once that's fully transferred, I'm gonna go in and add way too much Mod Podge. And then once I get all the Mod Podge on there, I take off the excess using a sponge applicator. Now I do this also because I don't want to pick up or interfere with the transfer. I don't want it detaching if I add too much friction with the paintbrush. So when I put a lot of Mod Podge, it allows my paintbrush to glide over the transfer hopefully not pulling anything up that I don't want pulled up. Now this Mod Podge is going to seal my project completely, protect my paint, protect my transfer, but it's also going to help us add the other details. So I'm going to use the same exact paint inlay from the last project. I'm going to spray it with water. Now this is going to activate the paint. It's also going to have, it's going to make the paint expand as well. So Hopefully, the pigment will be 
bolder, if that makes any sense. This is the second go with this paint. So this is my hope and dream. Now I did notice that when I peeled up, since this is the second time we used this paint inlay, it was a different color. It wasn't the original black ink. It actually turned into like a brown ink. So just like before, we're gonna apply it to the wet Mod Podge and then we're gonna press it down um, and really make it stick with a damp cloth. I'm gonna take these new IOD paint inlays and this is the first time I used the fork. And as you can see, you are able to remove it and reapply it even after you pressed it down because it takes some time for the paint to transfer into your medium. So you do have some wiggle room to adjust the placement. I would say probably about 20 seconds and then it just starts transferring. So you gotta make up your mind. And once the 20 seconds passes, it, the paint starts embedding into your medium. And uh, once you're happy with the placement, you're gonna go ahead with that damp rag. It's just damp with water and you're gonna press it in there, making sure that it's nice and wet and that everything gets damp. You don't want it dripping, but you want it damp so that the paint embeds into your medium. Then we're gonna let this dry fully. Once it's fully dry, we're going to do just as before. We're gonna take the spray bottle with just water and we're gonna spray it down. Once it's sprayed, we're gonna wait two minutes. We're not gonna pull it up yet. We gotta give it some time to loosen away from the paint. So we're, uh, as you can see, I'm just spraying here. And then in two minutes, this is sped up by the way, I'm gonna go ahead and starting on the corner, I'm gonna peel it back carefully, just as before. Now I did not let it dry fully because I have things to do. And um, the Mod Podge was kind of pulling up a little tiny bit in one of the corners. Now I was going for rustic, so I didn't really mind, but you want to let it fully cure. I would recommend maybe overnight, depending on the temperature of your craft space. It's very important to consider the temperature of the room you're working on because dry time is affected by temperature as well. So. As you can see here, I'm just speeding it up so you can see the beautiful, lovely transfer. And I am obsessed, guys. I'm going to try to use this transfer again. Because <laughs> I'm cheap like that. I mean, I'm creative like that. It's just so pretty and I have to get my money's worth. So I'm gonna take it and place it on the side, face up, ink side up, so that it can dry nice and flat because I'm gonna use it again. I have no shame. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that again. And I'm gonna do the same thing, spray down this fork, wait two minutes, and then peel up that film. And isn't it just gorgeous? It is so pretty. All right, so if you're new around here, I welcome you. I hope you have subscribed by now. And if you have, thank you so much. You're awesome. Say hi in the comments below so we can talk. Now to steal this thing, since the paint is still active, you don't want to brush on it. You're going to put Mod Podge and water in equal parts in a spray bottle and you're going to shake it up. Then you're going to spray the paint inlay. Now I'm taking off some excess water, I'm just dabbing it. You don't want to rub. No, you could use a wax, like a water-based wax. Um, probably not antique wax actually, clear wax. <laughs> because then you would just have a brown project. But maybe that's what you're going for, I don't know. So just, you know, just know you can spray it down with whatever water paste, wax, and water mixed. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and add these de these transfers, the same ones from the bro brocant uh, pack that I showed you at the beginning. And um, using the wave technique to get that B on there. And it's fairly simple, but I'm obsessed with these projects, guys. I'm so happy um, to have finally purchased some IOD. If you want to purchase some IOD 
products. Um, I will link the two shops that I bought mine from. So you gotta check out the shop called Home by Kristen on Etsy. She just has amazing customer service and awesome prices. So that's who I bought my paint inlays from. And I bought my other stuff from Stock and Farm, also on Etsy. But there's tons of stockists online. So, you know, those are just the ones I purchased from. Now, thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed these projects. I had so much fun creating them. A uh, special thank you to Brandy from the DIY Struggle for organizing all this and sponsoring our giveaway today. Don't forget to listen up every Friday for our code word and watch the full playlist, which I've linked below in my description box. As always, friends, thank you so much for watching. Take care. God bless. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. If you like this video, here's another one you might enjoy.